generally dry day on Wednesday. With... Welcome back to another session of Domains 21 at the OER by Domains 21 conference. Um, I am joined today by Christothea Rodota from the Open University, as well as Nashua Ishmael from the Open University. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Now, you all will be talking about how you can facil how facilitation by experts support learning and online citizen science, in particular, the case of Enquire, which I am quite interested in. So without any further ado, I'll remove myself and let the professionals speak. So, uh, good morning, and this is, uh, my name is Nashua, and uh, this work or the presentation, we are going to try to answer two questions within the Inquire platform. What do learner, learner, learners learn, and how the educational experts can support this learning? And so, we start first uh, with my colleague, Thea, so it's down to you, Thea, where you go through the, uh, the first of the, uh, the work. Hi, um, uh, thanks for that. Uh, so I'm going to talk you through a, a bit about Enquire. Uh, so Enquire is a citizen science platform that has been designed at the Open University in the UK. Uh, it has the citizens or the participants in the center of the citizen science activity. Um, we wanted to enable people uh, to set up and manage their own investigations in an easy way using Enquire. Uh, and uh, even if people do not have any research skills or any previous experience, they could go on Enquire, experiment with the tool and the options there, and then get support from the Enquire team to design and make live their own citizen science investigation. Um, you can access Enquire at enquire.org.uk. Uh, and the process of setting up a project is very easy. After you register, you can follow the steps and the guidance given there, and you can uh, set up uh, your citizen science project. You always have the option of uh, piloting the project with whoever you want to and get feedback to improve it. And then you make a request uh, to the team to uh, inspect the project, give you feedback, help you improve it more, and then you make it live on, on Enquire. Uh, the, the way we try to support learning for citizens is, is through the provision of personalized and immediate feedback after they complete uh, their investigation. And we hope that, that through this process, they will eventually start learning more about how science uh, is done. Uh, so on Enquire, we have two types of investigations, uh, confidential missions. So missions is the word we use to name investigations, uh, are closed uh, investigations. All the data submitted uh, uh, is known only to the author of the investigation. So what we share with authors is, uh, let's say, an Excel file with, uh, anonymized, with the anonymized data set of, of that mission. And here I have an example, uh, the Forest 404 experiment. Uh, this, in this mission, we shared a set of uh, audio clips uh, with sounds from nature, and we asked people about their reactions. Uh, the purpose was to understand the therapeutic value of uh, sounds from nature. Uh, the other type of missions we have is social missions. Uh, these uh, are open investigations, which means that all the data we share there uh, is available to anyone to read, comment, or like it. And here I have the example of uh, an investigation we created uh, to understand how teaching in Africa has changed because of the pandemic. Um, uh, Enquire has learn citizens as learners in the center of the activity uh, to support their learning. But on the other hand, we try to contribute uh, innovative and original insights to science. And here I have the example of the Garden Watch mission. Uh, this mission was in collaboration with the BBC and the British Trust of Ornithology. We managed to have more than 230,000 contributions. And um, the findings from 
from this investigation pointed to what people should do in their gardens in order to uh, support biodiversity and uh, make it more um, and uh, easier for species to live in their live and grow in their gardens so the overall vision about uh, enquire is uh, to empower citizens participants uh, to act as scientists so to start think uh, to start thinking and acting as scientists by first taking part in investigations set by others and uh, secondly by enabling them to set up their own investigations that may be of personal interest or maybe of relevance uh, to their community uh, we want to educate citizens to start thinking critically and scientifically and this is because we think that these skills are very crucial in the society we live in given the amplitude of information around us and a lot of discussions around misinformation or disinformation. Okay, so to brief you about the background of this research, the research has been offered to uh, 21 countries in Africa in response to the COVID-19 and the need to shift to remote teaching in these countries. Uh, more than 500 uh, academics and non-academic staff members in uh, these countries uh, have been invited to take part in an eight-week program. Uh, within these uh, eight weeks, uh, all the delegates, they were offered different types of events. Some of them, they were uh, synchronous real-time based on seminars, workshops, lectures, and other, they were non-real-time where they all were offered to take part in some of the social events uh, through different platforms. So some of the platforms were like a Telegram, which is a social network on their mobiles. Other, they are uh, offered by some of the platforms on uh, to be engaged in on the OU website and on the Enquire, which is the core of um, this work. Within the inquiry, uh, the, uh, as Thea uh, explained, actually uh, gave us a, a, a great overview of the inquiry. They were giving the opportunity to share their experience and become a scientist on, their, uh, uh, on the mission they've been given and to be able to critically reflect on the work during this period. The inquiry in this project has two uh, main tasks. The first one, it's a contribution. And that contribution, the delegates, they were given uh, uh, pre-constructed questions about the remote, how to remote it, uh, online teaching. Uh, they were pre-constructing according to the objectives of the mission, and they were given the opportunity to answer these uh, questions. Some of these questions were based on a uh, drop down menu so they can select from the options. They didn't have the opportunity to write more. Others, they have like a text box where they were given the opportunity to write down and reflect on their answers. And the other part, which is discussion that where it is, uh, they have been given an open space to discuss and reflect on their uh, experience. Uh, I'm going to take you through both parts and to see how the learner side they were reflecting engaged and also we'll have a highlight on the role of the educational expert who is uh, working like a moderator to this platform. First of all, the uh, this is uh, the main task of the inquiry and how we uh, we did a thematic analysis for both parts from the learner and the education expert and we were, as we mentioned, the closed ended questions more a quali quantitative uh, data and the open ended questions more a qualitative data which is a good feature of the inquiry because all the answers they are in a spreadsheet we are able to uh, extract and we're working on the analysis the first of all we were uh, the, the five questions they've been given as as we can see uh, the second question and the fifth questions um, the, both of them they were given a drop down menu to select from but the rest of the question they were um, uh, open ended and they have a text box when they can uh, have their discussion and then they go to the uh, or have their reflection. Then they go for the discussion, which is no, there are no questions that pre-constructed. They just it's very open to them to reflect and get engaged and add uh, their insights. So uh, first of all, I'm going to take you through the main emerging themes as an answer for each contribution, and then we can go to the discussion section. The first question. We were asking them about to share an activity because the main mission, they were about remote teaching in Africa. What happened? What are the challenges? How they are, uh, they are uh, their perception and what kind of support they may be they need. So the first one, it's 
have, share us an activity or experience that you encountered uh, in your work during since the pandemic. And here you can see they are share these are the main like uh, uh, sub, sub themes uh, where they are sharing different kinds of experience and activities they had either from them as a tutor or from the uh, education or from the learners from about the platform they are using. So it's kind of they are sharing experience. And here, this is an open-ended question, so they can even reflect to each other. The second question is one of the drop-down menus, so it's a closed-ended question where they are able to select from. And here you can see that they were uh, uh, like reflecting on what kind, how the tool that they use to get in contact with their students. Um, it is really interesting because you can see that they vary between some of these platforms. They were real time, others non real time, and some of them are just one way communication. So like an email and also one of the interesting uh, aspects of here that we found some uh, academics, they were using more than one platform to fit into the students needs. So some of them, they give us actually WhatsApp, Telegram and SMS. So it depends on the students needs. The third question here that they were uh, asked about a professional developing opportunities. Again, this is one of the interesting aspects because it is the difference between what has been offered by the organizations. It can be by offered by their own institution or maybe another organization like the ACDE, which is the main organization that is setting up the whole uh, program for them, uh, which is responsible for distance education in Africa. But it's not just this. Many of them also, they were talking about their own PDP or professional developing plan and how they are actually going through between the, their what is offered and what they can plan to themselves. The fourth question is about uh, uh, here. Uh, it's about, which is really one of the core questions here. What you think about moving from face-to-face uh, -to, -face to remote teaching, do you think it's a permanent or it's going to be a temporary uh, shifting uh, 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 area? And here it's interesting that most of them, they say, yes, it's a permanent, but. So there are some sub-themes about the but, what exactly? So it's not just, yes, we'd like to go there, but we found that people really, they are looking at what is what will happen after is going to be permanent what they need what like the sharing what actually what is the the main uh, their experience within this from the beginning since march 2020 the last question in the uh, contribution is about again it is one of the drop my uh, drop menu questions uh, and they were selecting from the main challenges really what is uh, like uh, concerning them what really they're not maybe they have like uh, some of the issues about so they were selecting and you can see that uh, exams and assessments especially going shifting online this is one of the main challenges and this is really that is one of the things that give us kind of ongoing support because we're working now on on one of them uh, sub projects as a response to this on how to support uh, the academics in Africa uh, with regard to the exams and how what are the main issues in providing an online exam and the different types of uh, the assessments. These are the, the main five questions apart for, uh, for the contributions. Let's go to the second part of the inquiry mission where they have the discussion. Again, the discussion, it is really open area where they can discuss. And, uh, and it is interesting because it is we found that the discussion it is informed by the contribution so when the people they would like to discuss and reflect they go to the discussion section again we extracted the information from the uh, from the inquiry platform and we worked on the thematic analysis and we came across some of the themes so here that you can see that people they are talking about the advantages and the challenges that they have interestingly that you can see that sometimes a challenge for a, a person can be an opportunity for another so some of the academics they found that really it is opportunity for to have a teacher student communication because they are able to have a 24 7 support also they have the opportunity students they more can have like a, a personalized learning within the teacher with the teacher other academics they found no because it will break the physical presence of the whole environment as a teacher content and they found that's more kind of an isolation between the teacher and student so it is not one size fits all uh, other um, themes that we came across about the, the discussed topics about the prerequisite for the online learning so and this actually found this uh, a link between what what are the challenges uh, and going to a permanent so a permanent position so going a permanent uh, uh, online teaching 
this they are prerequisite and this may be this is a message between them a message to the uh, to the, the their uh, institutions and the organizations what they really they need either from themselves either from the organization from the institution and maybe from the library all kinds of support they need to prepare them to have a stable shifting to remote teaching the interesting also thing about the solutions, the solutions have been proposed. Some people, they really took the challenge and took it forward and, the, and keep on working, uh, uh, reflecting on different types of uh, um, um, uh, um, challenges. But also some people, they are providing solutions to each other. And here is where also the expert or the educational expert who is moderating the platform start also to share and to help with the solution from their own experience. The outcome of the learners, what what did uh, learners learn here from the inquiry? We found that they really they practice different uh, areas of uh, and different approaches within learning. They share, they communicate, they reflect it. So you can see this uh, like a combination between in inquiry based learning. We start by the information question resources and findings and at the same time it's collaborative so it's not a standalone or a person like google something but it is more a collective uh, answer they could uh, end it up with there are things that we couldn't find within the inquiry like did it help them to make a decision making so is it something that we came across or something that tangible we can say yeah they decided something we there are things that we couldn't find or the impact because it may be impact that we'd like to go through more an ethnographic ethnographic pattern to find out what is the impact of this so but it there are uh, uh, obvious a pedagogical approach like collaborative and inquiry-based learning uh, have emerged. About the role of the tutor and the educational expert who was more like a moderator, facilitator, educational expert, and maybe sometimes like a mentoring. There are also emerging themes, what we were doing, uh, because we're working again a thematic analysis, but it's based on the self-reflection. So the uh, education expert, they give their self-reflection reflection on the role within the, uh, the eight weeks uh, mission. So the theme that they were providing, like they share their own experience, the resources, and sometimes it's the experience from their own work or from the open university resources, or maybe an, uh, a resort they came across, they share it. Sometimes also they are initiating, working like an icebreaker, because not all people are really aware of what is this, or maybe that they know exactly what they should do, or maybe just because of the social aspect is missing, so the really that um, uh, the education experts try to engage people socially to lead uh, to ask questions and answers. So the uh, the main I would say as a summary, the role of the education expert really vary between like a, going uh, give you the guidance. So how, uh, about how the social guidance actually about how to uh, uh, to start or maybe that help also to answer or initiate or maintain the discussion. Sometimes just to make it like a chain and to to link between people's answers also about the uh, expert or the uh, the area of expertise going back to resources and try to provide some of the resources to help people to find an answer for the question also about to make an organizational function and to link between different uh, uh, learners and maybe different sometimes we like you say because they were people from different countries. So we can say, yeah, your colleague from Kenya mentioned something like uh, that can help the other in, in Nigeria and so on. So these are like uh, kind of different hats the educational expert um, can help with uh, within the, the mission on the inquiry. And this is actually the end. What's next? Maybe down, down to you, Thea. What do you think? What's next with the inquiry? Well, thank, thank, thank you, Nasha. That was really interesting. Um, well, uh, I guess this was the first time we piloted uh, this approach, uh, having an educational expert to support the learning for participants or citizens who take part in citizen science investigations. So we aim in the future to do more of these investigations to get a better understanding of how an educational expert could bet, best support the discussions in an open or social mission. Um, and secondly, I guess there are technical uh, um, issues there we could improve. Uh, I mean, 
mean we could for example find ways to flag up interesting or uh, uh, really innovative uh, ideas or comments so everyone can read them the moment they uh, check in, check into the investigation or we are looking now of ways to visualize the data in both confidential and social missions uh, so people can see how their data compares uh, to other people's the moment they submit uh, their responses to the investigation so there are definitely a lot of things to do in the future both uh, research wise and technically uh, from my end i would say as an educational expert on the platform for the future i would like to know more about my learners so i think it's worth that when we are working on a different context we need to know more about the background and the experience of delegates people who are going to take part in the platform know about their background experience and maybe some of the challenges i think that's as a preparation for an educational expert to moderate uh, the inquiry platform that may be something that a prerequisite for them and uh, yeah, I think that is the end. And I would like to thank you very much. Thank you. It's super interesting for you to be doing this action research in the moment to find out what's happening as we've all lived through a very strange year. And online learning has taken on a new sense of importance for a variety of reasons. So thank you very much both for your research and for presenting it here. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> nom, nom, nom.